what's up guys welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new my name is Aquana I'm 22 years old and this is a budget friendly channel in today's video I'm going to be telling you seven money saving tips that I use or have used to help me save money so we're gonna get right into it with tip number one I think this is the most basic and probably the most important money saving tip that you can do and that is going to be to make a budget So I say that this is the most important one because for one, if you don't have a budget, you don't know where your money is going, you don't know how much money you have coming in, you don't know how much money you can save, you don't know how much money you're wasting. So you really need to sit down and evaluate how much money you have coming in, how much money you have going out, where you can cut some expenses or where you can increase your savings. So the second tip that I have for you is going to be to meal plan. So you guys have probably heard this before, you know, if you want to save money on groceries, you meal plan and you go into the store with a grocery list. So what I like to do is take it a step further. I do like to meal plan. I usually go on like TikTok or YouTube and I'll find a couple recipes that I want to try out and I will make a grocery list based on the items that I need to make those dishes. And I like to use Instacart to do my grocery shopping. Now, I don't actually order my groceries through Instacart and have them delivered to my house. Well, sometimes I do, but for the most part, what I use Instacart for is to build my grocery list. I usually will shop at Aldi or Publix. I will go onto Instacart and put all of my groceries into my cart. This way I can see my total and I can see approximately how much I'll be spending in the store based on my grocery list. And what I'll do is I'll take that list that I've created on Instacart and actually go into the store and still do my own in-person shopping because nine times out of 10, the stuff that I have in my cart online is going to be cheaper in the store. So even though it may look like I'm going to spend $70 on groceries, when I go into the store, I may end up spending 50 or 60 or whatever it is, a little bit less because the items are actually cheaper in the store. But what this helps me do is not pick up extra things. I go in with my phone, I know exactly what I'm looking for, I know exactly how much it's gonna cost or approximately how much it's gonna cost and I can go in, grab those items, get out and most of the time I end up saving way more money than I expected. The third tip that I have for you is to limit your access to your cards. Now, for me, I usually do a cash budget system, meaning when I get paid, I go to the bank, I take out whatever money I need to take out, and I will put that in my binders based, I will split it amongst my binders based on if it's bills, sinking funds, and I even have my cash wallet where I split my my spending money. What I mean by limit your access to your cards is to leave your credit cards at home. If you have a bad habit of just making impulse decisions and buying things that you don't necessarily need or you don't actually have the money to pay for and you put it on your credit card, if you leave your credit card at home, that takes that option away from you. And what I've also learned to do is remove my credit cards from Apple Pay because that's also another convenient way for me to make impulse buys. So for me, by leaving credit cards at home where I don't want to um, raise the balance or spend more money on and taking those credit cards off of my Apple Pay has helped me stop doing a lot of impulse buying and just spending money on things that I really shouldn't be spending money on. The fourth tip that I have for you is to set up automatic transfers.
So for me, setting up an automatic transfer is the easiest way for me to keep money going into my savings account. I have it set up so that every time I get paid, I have a certain amount of money that goes from my checking account to my savings account before I can even wake up and look at the accounts or figure out whether or not I want to save for that paycheck. I set it up so the bank does all the work for me and I, I'm saving money and I don't pay attention to it. I don't even realize that the money is gone because by the time I look at the check, it's already been transferred. The fifth money saving tip that I have for you is going to be to keep a coin jar. Now, I don't know if you are one of those people that likes to keep your change or if you're one of those people that likes to tell everybody else to keep your change. But I noticed that once I got my coin jar, I actually went to the dollar store and just picked out some stickers and created a little coin jar. And because I have this jar, I'm more motivated to, for one, get my coins when I have change and to not have coins just floating everywhere, like in my car on the dresser i'm more intentional about where i'm putting the change so i've actually been doing pretty good this is my coin jar and now every time i go somewhere and i use cash if i get change i put it in my wallet and then every time i restuff my cash wallet i empty all of my coins into this jar i'm not sure how much money i've saved by doing this but I'm pretty sure when I take it to the bank or wherever I take it to exchange the coins for paper money, I will, I think I'll be shocked at how much money I've saved just in change. The sixth money saving tip that I have for you is going to be to do a savings challenge. Okay, so a savings challenge. I'm pretty sure you guys at some point have seen the 100 envelope challenge. Um, that's an example of a savings challenge. To me, it's a, it's a savings challenge for someone who is making a good amount of money, who has extra income that they can afford to put that much money away. But I've seen a lot of lower income savings challenges as well. There's the $1 challenge where you just save every one dollar that you end up with or the five dollar challenge where you just save all the fives that you end up with um i've seen a lot of savings challenges on etsy you can create your own savings challenge uh they're actually fairly easy to find the low income savings challenges i've seen youtubers and um just a lot of people selling like savings challenge books but you don't have to have extra money budgeted aside for a savings challenge your savings challenge could be as simple as keeping all of your one dollar bills or intentionally putting five dollars away you know they can be very simple i feel like on youtube when i see people stuffing savings challenges they always stuff very large amounts into these challenges and it makes me feel discouraged because i don't have that much extra income to save as much as they do but it's very simple for you to find a low income savings challenge or create your own that way you'll be saving whatever bit of money you have to be able to save and the seventh money saving tip that i have for you is to use separate banks So what I mean by using a separate bank um, is that you don't have your checking account and your savings account in the same app. When you have access to your savings account that easily, you are more likely to just transfer money when you don't have to. For any minor inconvenience, you can just transfer from your savings into your checking account. It's all done in one app. It's very easy to do. But if you have your savings account with one bank and your checking account with another, it adds a little extra step for you to have to transfer money from your savings to your checking account. And something else that I've actually seen that I thought was a great idea is for you to have a high yield savings account 
which I actually don't have one of those yet. I'm looking into it, but it seemed like a great idea to have a high yield savings account. You have a completely separate app, completely separate bank, and it's not as easy for you to transfer the money because apparently it takes like one business day minimum for you to make those kinds of transfers, which just makes you think twice about whether or not you actually need to make that transfer. And it's gonna help you plan ahead for when you actually do need to make a transfer for something. You you think about it, you're intentional about what money you're moving from your savings to your checkings. So I hope today's video was helpful for you guys. These are my seven money saving tips. Maybe I'll do a part two to this if I think of any more money saving tips and tricks. But that's all for today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.